When you think of Florida Keys wildlife, one of the big things many people go there for is the large amounts of warblers, hawks, and shorebirds migrating there during the fall. While these birds are absolutely incredible, today I hope to highlight some of the other species like insects and reptiles that I found on my recent trip there. You couldn't go five minutes at the park I was at without seeing one of these beautiful butterflies, the West Indian mangrove buckeye, which is a lifer for me. This species is quite similar to the very common, common buckeye that I see usually around where I live. However, they differ both in pattern and habitat preference. The West Indian mangrove buckeye is much more orangish colored overall, lacking the big white patches on the inside of the two large eye spots on the forewings found in common buckeye. Also, while common buckeyes are a lot more general in their habitat preference, West Indian mangrove buckeyes are only found in the drier scrubby areas right off the coast from mangrove swamps and salt marshes along the coasts. In my opinion, these guys are actually more easily confused with the northern tropical buckeye than they are with the common buckeye. Northern tropicals are found in extremely south Florida and are overall more gray-brown in color with bold white antennae. While the buckeyes are found in drier areas just off the coast, the mangrove skipper is a beautiful butterfly species that you could find in the greener areas along the coast of mangrove swamps. They are one of the few Florida skippers that have bright blue coloration on them. A very closely related butterfly species to the mangrove skipper is the hammock skipper, a woodland dwelling species often found perching upside down underneath leaves. Both species are in a group known as dicot skippers due to their host plants. While the Peter's Rockagama is an invasive species and is currently badly impacting Florida's native butterfly populations, they were still an interesting lizard species to see quite commonly around the park I was at. You can see how well adapted they are both to living on the ground and also in trees, rocks, and even buildings. All the ones I saw today were juveniles, but mature males have a bright orangish colored head. Funny enough, on this same wall was actually a mantis oatheca or an egg case. You can't talk about Florida Keys wildlife without mentioning the amazing bird migrations that pass through there. Among the smaller tree-dwelling species that pass through are the vireos, such as this beautifully patterned yellow-throated vireo, and the warblers. Many warblers that pass through the Florida Keys, such as this bay-breasted warbler, have dull plumage throughout the fall and winter but develop brighter colors as they approach their breeding destinations in the spring and summer. Another group of migratory birds found in the Keys are the shorebirds. There were at least seven different species of sandpipers and plovers that I spotted at this location, such as the sandrilling, the semi-palmated plover, and the least sandpiper. All these smaller sized shorebirds have similar feeding habits and fast moving behaviors. Despite these birds' beaks being very long, they're actually called short-billed doachers because their beak is slightly shorter than that of the long-billed doacher. While it wasn't a lifer, these were still my best views of Swainson's hawks, a highly migratory hawk species that passes through the Florida Keys during the fall. Not only are they highly migratory, but they're also highly variable ranging from being almost entirely dark below to having an entirely cream-colored belly and a dark neck band. What remains constant, though, is the white chin and the long, thin wings. The common green darner is a very common dragonfly species that I see quite often around where I live. There is also a group of these flying around the park. However, one of the members of this group was not a common green darner but a much rarer close relative of it called the Amazon Darner. This was not only a lifer for me, but also a surprise find. These guys are also known as a vagrant and local breeder along the west coast of Florida. However, this is actually the farthest east one has been recorded in the state of Florida so far. She was flying so quickly that I couldn't capture her patterning on video. However, I did capture multiple pictures showing some of the important identification marks. Amazon darners, both males and females, have a white ring around the base of the abdomen, as well as white or blue speckles running down the abdomen. 